Hello B&G 426 526 class. Uh, welcome to the flipped classroom for pre-lecture. Um, we're going to do a flipped classroom activity on Wednesday on metabolic pathway construction. So we talked about pathway construction today, Monday, um, and just what it involves. Um, the, the main players in enzymatic um, pathways and metabolic pathways are uh, enzymatic reactions. And these enzymatic reactions, they, you know, we discussed, they give cells life. And, you know, you know pathways are a result of that, giving um, the enzymatic reactions that link things together to make uh, products out of substrates, uh, carbon sources, glucose, etc. Uh, and products such as things like acetyl-CoA, um, pyruvate, things that we need to survive, as well as things that our bacteria or yeast might need uh, to make product. And enzymes do their business in succession as a pathway with one enzyme's product as another substrate, etc., etc., etc. And this is not a haphazard construction here. This has been well designed uh, over the course of hunt thousands, if not millions, of years. So if we are faced with trying to determine a pathway in an organism because we have a certain carbon source and we want to make a certain product, um, we have to be able to kind of sketch out or map out the route from um, from substrate to product. So in this case we have a pathway here, it's a branch pathway um, and has two branches uh, starting with A and both end and ending with E. And the intermediates in each pathway are different, each branch of the pathway. And each branch of the pathway can actually be thought of as a separate pathway. So what if E was a special product and we wanted microbial cells to make a lot of it? Also what if we really didn't know the construction of the A to E pathway? What if we didn't have this little map here? In fact, we wanted to make a map that looked kind of like this so we could know the pathways to get from A to E. And we just basically have a bunch of enzymatic reactions. So we have these re enzymatic reactions. Um, this is our A to E pathway in terms of just haphazardly arranged enzymatic reactions. As written, yes, they look pretty random, but we can link them together to construct a pathway using a simple algorithm uh, from Mavravuniatis et al. Um, 1991. I've posted that paper on my courses if you're interested. So we can use that algorithm to link these enzymatic reactions together and form a pathway. Construct a pathway, or really reconstruct a pathway. But we have some constraints here. So, and the constraints are born out of asking ourselves, what does every pathway have? Every pathway has a substrate. We start somewhere. Every pathway has a product. We gotta end somewhere. And every product, every pathway is gonna have intermediates that allow us to get from substrate to product. We form intermediates on the way. We can identify substrates and products because Usually a substrate is what we want the cells to grow on. The products are what we want the cells to make. Everything else becomes intermediates. So for example, we would say that our substrate for this pathway is A, and our product is E. And then we can go from there. So then we begin to kind of put lingo together, um, really, to describe this construction. So we have A as our substrate. It is what we would call the required substrate for this pathway construction. So our pathway map at the end of all this better have A at the beginning. And then we have designated E as the product, and that is our required product for this pathway construction. So again, our pathway map at the end better have E. So we talk required substrate, required product, why are they called this? Well, I mean, essentially, when we have finished assembling the pathway, we'll have A at the beginning and E at the end. So A will be our de facto substrate, our required substrate, and E will be 
our de facto product or our required product. Everything else are intermediates. And intermediates are substrates and products in their own right, but for the sake of this pathway construction exercise, they are what we would call excluded products. We are kind of excluding them from the pathway. If we see them at the beginning or the end of the pathway we've created, we've done something wrong. So how do we start? So for each enzymatic reaction that we have in this list, we designate it with its own letter. In this case, I go A, B, C, D, E. There are lowercase letters in a bracket like that. And I've put them in sequential order. Or they're in sequential order, and I've put the letters in sequential order as well. Next, we want to take those enzymatic reactions and make a list. List in terms of compounds or metabolites and which reactions are involved with these metabolites. So for A, we have, for each of these actually, we have two reactions. A, we have A and C. B, we have A and B. For C, we have B and D. And for D, we have C and E. And for E, we have D and E. So we can line up the metabolites and the reactions that involve them. And now we're ready to start assembling. So we start with a metabolite that is involved in the fewest reactions. But in this case, all metabolites are involved in two reactions. So what do we do in this situation? It's best to start at or near the top. But we want to choose a metabolite that is both a product and a reactant. So we can actually begin to piece things together. So let's start with metabolite B. It's the product in one reaction, reaction A. It's the reactant in reaction B. You can see it right there. So the logical thing to do would be to string these reactions together to form AB. So we'll remove these individual reactions and put together A yields C. And this is our coupled reactions A and B. Okay, so we have our mini pathway here producing C here. Now let's process the metabolite C. So we have again two reactions involved. We have AB and we have D. C is the product in AB and C is the substrate in D. So let's combine to make a pathway, a mini pathway ABD. So again we get rid of these reactions and we end up with A yields E via the ABD pathway. And so we essentially have a full pathway here. Our product E is being made from our required substrate A. One pathway completed. A is a required reactant, E is a required product. The rest of the reactions must be another pathway. So we look at our new pathway, and this is a fairly simple one. Let's process D here. D is the product in one reaction and is the reactant in another reaction, E. It's the product in C and the reactant in E. Let's process that one. So we get rid of those two individual reactions and make A to D. Actually, it should be A to E, rather. But anyway, in the end, we have two pathways, both A to E different enzymatic reactions are involved. And this fits with our original pathway schematic. So we have two different pathways. In this case, you know, we know there are two branch pathways. But we have A making E in both cases. This ABD reaction and in this CE reaction. And we could potentially map out our pathway looking like this. Um, and this would be the case if we were just dealing with enzymatic reactions that were in one organism, we could probably make a branch pathway uh, that looks like this because all these enzymes are coming from one organism. So for the flipped classroom exercise, you'll refer to this lecture plus Monday's class. Follow the notations that we used and the nomenclature we used uh, and you'll be given two scenarios, two sets of enzymatic reactions. Uh, you'll be given, in each case, required reactant and a required product. And then what you do is assemble pathways. And make sure you note, and we didn't do any in this um, 
small example, but note reverse reactions if applicable. So if we have A double arrow, you know, A going to B and B can go back to A, we would make two reactions of that. We would make reaction A, which is A going to B, then reaction negative A, which is B going to A. And so th just this one notation actually gives us two reactions. So your output, output for this exercise will be uh, bring pen, pen, plenty of paper on which to work. Uh, you'll work in groups as always to piece together these pathways. This is the first time running this exercise, so I have no idea how long this will, get, what this will take. Hopefully, you'll be able to get everything done in class. And on the assignment sheet, you'll list the outputs, which are your list of reactions with their letter designations. So you have a required reactant, a required product, and arrows taking you from that required reactant, showing you all the different enzymatic reaction steps to your required product. So on your assignment sheet, you write your assembled pathways. So you, in this case, we have A to E, where A goes through A, B, D, all the way to E. So first you'll list your reactions, your individual reactions, in this manner. And then once you've assembled your pathway, you'll list your pathway in a manner that's looking something like this. And then also any work, any scratch work you've done on notebook paper, hand that in too. Uh, and if there is time in the class, I will uh, reveal the pathways um, that these exercises are modeled on. Okay, so that's that. And we will see you in class.